Hello fellow YouTubers, today I'm going to do a video on my installation of the diesel heater, Chinese diesel heater. It's kind of along the van's line, I have got one of these installed in my van, but this, in the van it's the Urbis Matcher D2, which um, those who have followed my van build can see in the videos that I've uploaded. But as I say, today I've fitted one of these Chinese diesel heaters into my lounge. And um, it's working really well, I've had it now running for about for the five, six weeks. And I'll talk about fuel shortly in terms of usage but I'm just going to do a bit of a video to show you how I've installed it and how it's working for me. So in my house here, my diesel heater has actually been situated at the front of my house. And so I've had to think about look and also the noise from the neighbours. Because I've got a bit of a bay window, I wanted to situate it so that it actually goes into the lounge. I can't actually put it down the side of my house, which is also the wall to my lounge, because the van goes there and it protrudes too much. So what I've actually done is built this little box, put it just out of wood. I did put some, it's just an old pallet that I had, which my seat came for, for my, my camper van. So I recycled the actual pallet itself. I routed the edges so that all the wood overlapsed to give it more water proofing properties. The top of it, as you can see here, is just a piece of felt stuff, which is just a waterproof cover. A couple of the issues I had, as you can see, I've got a drain pipe there and also the lip of my window ledge um, under here prevented me from actually being able to lift it up and obviously I've got to lift the lid up in order to refuel it. So what I actually did was put a hinge in the middle which just allows me to lift up just this half and it gives me enough clearance to get access to the machine itself. So I've just gone for one of these traditional sort of garage ones I guess you would say they are. This is the um, hot air being forced straight into the house. And the back here wired in those two negative and positive connectors because they're much easier and also what I've done I've got a spare one in the garage so if it was to go wrong I can very easily change it over to the same system. I did actually have to remove the remote so removing the remote from the unit which is now located in the doors which I'll show shortly. I just bought a simple three pin waterproof plug from eBay which allowed me to cut into the um, cabling from the controller to the unit, just widen this plug and then fed it through into the house itself. On the back here, those two cables you can see are power supply, a 12 volt power supply coming from my garage which allows me to um, connect my fuel pump which goes into a 20 litre jerry can. I'll show you that shortly. The vent you see down here is the vent which is allowing air to be sucked in fresh air over the chamber and blown indoors. So I'm trying to get as much fresh air into the house as possible. Originally I had it set up just drawing air from the box, there's plenty of air in the box, but I really felt I'd rather have fresh air coming in as opposed to just drawing air from the box. Down the bottom, as obviously as you can see, is the um, air intake. And the very bottom of the little round circle is again another vent just to help keep air circulating in the box. The little kind of extension, if you want to call it, on the side there, that's what the exhaust is housed in. Again, vent on the top to let fresh air being pulled in. And there's the actual exhaust coming out the side here. So I've got to say, this is the actual noise on it, so I'm currently on low. So it isn't too noisy at all. And as I come back up, just to show you the pump itself is going. But again, that is not noisy too. I made a bit of a modification to my pump. So this is pretty much the same machine that I've got out there, but I bought a spare one. One of the things to what I wanted to do was make the pump a little bit quieter. So what I've done, I know you can buy pumps which are supposed to be a lot quieter, and they probably are, but for me, all I actually done was put a little bit of aluminium, which is pot, railed, pot, pot riveted onto here, and it just suspends my pump using cable ties. So the pump is not actually attached to anything, and it makes such a difference. It's not reverberating through this bit here, which is where all the noise comes from. When I first started this when I was a test, gosh, it was making a lot of noise. But as soon as I changed this, and so that it's not attached to anything, it really quite understands. It's such a simple, quick way of doing it as well. So if anybody's experiencing the same sort of problems and they want a cheap fix, just rig it up such as this, and you'll find you'll be very surprised how much quieter it is. For refilling it, I've just got a hose pipe running down into a 20 litre jerry can 
the hose is connected to a small pump, a 12 volt pump that I just bought off eBay. That sits into my jerry can. That's the power supply. And this actually comes with a handy little switch that allows me to turn the pump on and off. For connecting the LCD controller in indoors from the actual unit itself, you're going to need to separate the current loom and then reconnect it. What I did with mine was just buying these three pin plugs that you can buy from eBay. They come with three wires and most controllers I found do actually have just three wires that you need to connect. So with these connections, you can't really get them wrong because they actually have a, they only go together one way. And once screwed together, you have a watertight connection. Okay, so here we are in my lounge. As you can see there, the heater's control is situated there. And I had to buy one of these vents. They come with doors and that you can close and you will need one if you're installing one of these doors because you will get a draft that's coming from machines outside. So if you're unable to close the vents off, you will find your house. Especially if you're drawing air in such as I am, fresh air from outside, it will pull in a draft. So by all means, invest in one of these. One of the things I found with mine is that there is a strong smell of diesel when I first start it up, or kerosene in my case. Now I've taken the machine out, I've stripped it down, put new seal gaskets in it. I didn't put silicon on the gaskets, but I did put new gaskets in. And it seemed to clear it up for maybe a day, but realistically um, it's come back again sort of thing. So I'm getting quite a smell at start up and close down. So if anyone knows how to cure that, which is over and above changing the gaskets, I'll be really interested to know so that I can sort it out. It's probably going to be a job I'll be doing at the end of winter. In terms of running costs, people say, what do they cost to use? Well, I've run mine now for, uh, I did a total of 25 hours, and that was with the staff filling up and then waiting until the machine to give me an 08 error saying I ran out of fuel. Now, that's 25 hours in total. And what I found is that people saying it will run for X amount of time. Well, it probably will if you just turned it on and let it run continuously, but I turn mine off at night time because I don't actually want it on overnight. So mine would start up, so it would use it a boost on max for maybe an hour, and then it shuts down to low sort of thing, so, and then I'd be turning it off in the evening. So I get roughly, as I say, about 25 hours to 4 litres. That's with starting up and turning off several times during that cycle. So um, it's very difficult to say what you will get out of it. Everyone's usage is going to be a different sort of thing. But for me, that's pretty good usage. And you'll, you'll notice that when you're using it, that the tank itself um, only allows, in my case, 4 litres of usage because the actual feed from the tank leaves about a, a litre in the bottom of the tank before I need to refill it. And